Hi everyone, I want to talk about low vitamin B12, which is known as B12 deficiency. B12 deficiency. The possible causes of vitamin B12 deficiency could be pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is an autoimmune condition and that means antibodies are directed against the intrinsic factors or the gastric pyretal cells. Also possible could be atrophic gastritis, autoimmune thyroiditis, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, bacteria overgrowth, parasitic infestation, increased gastrin production, pancreatic insufficiency, and inadequate intake, which could be either the individual has chosen to become a vegetarian without meat, or as a result of poverty, they couldn't afford to food containing vitamin B12. It's also possible as a result of religious practices that forbids eating of meat, medications like omeprazole or any of the proton pump inhibitors, cimetidine or any of the H2 antagonists, metformin that is a member of the guanines. Also surgery, abdominal surgery that decreases absorption of vitamin B12. Clinical features of vitamin B12 deficiency. There will be a lot of features, but let's go one after the other. If it, if it is due to subacute combined degeneration of the dorsal, that is posterior, and lateral columns, that is white matter, of the spinal cord, then we're likely going to be faced with the following. Tarsia, let's get abnormally, paresthesia or numbness of the lower limbs, spasticity, paraplegia, weakness, and incontinence. As possibility of mood changes, leading to depression, as a matter of fact, is a differential diagnosis of depression or vice versa. Forgetfulness, cognitive decline, so it's possible that you have to rule out vitamin B12 deficiency while making diagnosis of dementia. Just like I've just said, dementia, delusion, and hallucination. It's also possible to have insomnia, irritability, visual impairment, and when physical examination is done, there's going to be sensory deficits, vibration and position sense will become impaired, and abnormal deep tendon reflexes. Also, it's likely that the individual will become rigid, and having problem with speech, dysarthria, restless leg syndrome, glossitis, skin hyperpigmentation, increased osteoporosis, pallor, dizziness, fatigue, palpitations, chest pain, shortness of breath, tremor, increased gastric carcinoma, particularly if it is as a result of pernicious anemia, constipation, diarrhea, decreased in appetite. Also, if this is involving the pediatric age group, you likely see the following. Apotonia, convulsion, developmental delay, feeding difficulty, and regression. How do we make the diagnosis of vitamin B12? We need to assess vitamin B12 itself in the serum. 
And if the value given is less than 200 picograms, that is 200 picograms per milliliter, then vitamin B12 deficiency is confirmed here. If the value is between 200 to less than 300 picograms per milliliter, that is borderline vitamin B12 deficiency. If it is greater than 300 picograms per milliliter, that is normal. So there is no vitamin B12 deficiency if the value of vitamin B12 in the serum is greater than 300 picograms per milliliter. We can use the value of methyl malonic acid and homocysteine combined. So if we have MMA, that is methyl malonic acid and homocysteine at normal range, then there's no deficiency of vitamin B12. If there's increased methyl malonic acid and homocysteine is also increased, then we are dealing with vitamin B12 deficiency. But if we have normal methyl malonic acid and increased homocysteine, there is no vitamin B12 deficiency. So the, the only situation where we can have vitamin B12 deficiency when we are using MMA and homocysteine is when both are raised. Methyl malonic acid is always elevated in B12 deficiency. Methyl malonic acid can also be elevated in normal B12. But when that happens, it, it's certain there's renal impairment. For example, if the methyl malonic acid is elevated and B12 is normal, when you assay the B12 itself in the serum and you are getting about 300 picograms per milliliter or more, which is that B12 is normal, and here is methyl malonic acid that is also normal, then you have renal impairment. Homocysteine is elevated in both folate and B12 deficiency. That is why we don't use homocysteine on its own alone to make our judgment. And we always combine the value of homocysteine with that of MMA. Also, antibodies to intrinsic factors could be acid. Shilling tests is done in the past, but no more invoked, so I'm not going to waste my time on that. This is the end of the presentation for now. As far as vitamin B12 deficiency is concerned, as per the causes of it, the clinical features, and of course, the diagnosis. So the next presentation will be on the treatment, and that is very important, as well as differential diagnosis. Thank you for listening. Kindly subscribe so that you can get these presentations immediately they are published. Thank you.